What does Ikea have to do with blogging? Probably more than you think. Find out in today's episode. Hi, I'm Liz Stapleton of the Blogger Breakthrough Summit, and welcome to the Blogger Breakthrough Podcast. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you a clip from Funnel Marketing Master Ryan Turner's 2021 Summit Session, uh, where he breaks down funnel marketing and gives you some great examples of how to draw your audience in with value. So let's go ahead and get to it. And there's three components uh, of funnel marketing. Like when we create funnels, we are either generating leads or generating prospects that are going to um, be open to possibly purchasing uh, from us. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the first stage of the funnel. The yeah. second stage of the funnel is educating those leads so that they're open and can gain the trust to actually purchase from us. And then the third part of the funnel is that, that part where they actually say, okay, here's my money. Uh, please change my life. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so when we create a funnel, oftentimes we're using one or two components of those types of funnels. And yep. we'll think of that whole thing as a funnel, but um, it's really important that you understand what you need. When we, before we started recording, you talked about how people get into this just mark, marketing cycle of not providing the right content and just focusing on the marketing as opposed to the rest of it. How do people stop that? <laughs> I guess is the, the question. Yeah, well, um, I think with regards to bloggers, it can be, um, well, they've got this blog and it's got great content and they're worried about possibly sounding salesy. They don't want to use things like maybe, you know, pay-per-click ads on their blog because then it ends up being like, you know, clickbaity. And people feel when it comes, when when you start thinking about money and you start thinking about advertising and start thinking about all these things, lots of negative energy comes into your mind. And so the first thing that you should probably think, this is a, a, a presentation on funnels. I'm a funnel marketer, is to think of what a funnel is. And um, I just mentioned copy blogger because I really like what they do and they're using funnels constantly, but you never feel like you're, you're being pitched at. You feel like they're always offering value. And what I like to uh, tell people, um, and I use, usually make this analogy is, Um, to think of your customers or your audience coming to you and walking into Ikea, right? You need to be Ikea. You don't want to be Dollar General. Okay. Now, both Dollar General and Ikea sell a lot of the same stuff. They sell a lot of the same quality stuff from the same places of origin. Many probably of the products that they sell come possibly from the same factories. But what gives you a sense of more, uh, let's say, mm, satisfaction or fulfillment when you walk into the store, walking into Ikea or walking into Dollar General? Most people would say Ikea. And Ikea does something, even though they sell lots of the same project products, besides the furniture. Obviously, Ikea, Dollar General, and Dollar Stores, they don't sell lots of furniture, but they yeah. sell plates and you know, when you think about when you walk into Ikea, you see all the pretty stuff, you see what's possible, and then you start to make your list of ideas and what works, and then, you, and then it's it. up, not till the very end that you can go pick out the stuff to buy. Exactly. So this is, the, this is exactly it. It's not that you have something to offer. It's that you're showing the benefit of using what it is that you can offer, like suction cups. You're not going to go to Dollar General and be like, I need a toothbrush and then pass a suction cup on some other aisle and be like, oh, a suction cup. Let me get that suction cup even though I'm here for a toothbrush. You don't do that. Mm-hmm. Yet at Ikea, guess what? You will go to Ikea and be like, I need the Yugstrup, you know, credenza for my, for, for my, um, you know, my foyer. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the time you get the credenza and you get to the checkout, look at your basket. What do you have? You yeah. might have some suction cups in there. Yeah. You didn't go into Ikea to get some suction cups, but Ikea did something that the dollar store did not. And what they did is demonstrate value. They don't just put some, Ikea, some suction cups on a rack. They actually, you passed a display that had a, a little, you know, uh, toothbrush to holder. Ideas, yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. And they showed you how you can use this and apply this in your home. And then they did something else they have a call to action. So it's not like they're just showing you how beautiful this suction cup is holding up this little toothbrush holder. They're actually showing you how it applies to your life. And then they say, but look, 
if this is something that interests you, we happen to have a giant basket of a thousand of them right here. But you're not uh, going to see them somewhere else in the store. You need to get it. They're going to be right here, right, right next to where you saw this really cool message. Mm -hmm. And so they're combining the message, which is this can make your life better. Go ahead. You know, you want it. Mm -hmm. And they do this constantly. And then you have to go in one direction. So I'm not saying you should have a blog that makes people like not be able to click anywhere, but yeah, you should yeah. be offering these types of, of calls to action. Like if you're talking about a training or if you're talking about something in your blog, maybe there's some type of training or some type of product or some type of, type of service that you could mention right there. Mm -hmm. A case study or a case study. And if you're interested in finding more information about this one thing I was just talking about, click here. Those are lots of things that bloggers, especially in the beginning might not necessarily do because they feel like it's a little piece of information that's invading their passion or invading their, their, their idea flow. I can't put that in there. That sounds salesy or that sounds like I'm trying to pitch something. And yeah. part, part of that is true, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why it's important to, to know that you're in this for the business and you're in it. You're not in it for the business. You're in it to make a living off of it. You yeah. can't live off of passion alone. Passion is not going to pay your bills. Okay, hopefully this episode has given you a clearer picture of how effective funnels work. If you want to hear all of Ryan's talk and all of the 2021 Summit sessions in their entirety, head to blogbreakthrough.com forward slash podcast deal to find out how you can access all the sessions today. Be sure to join me next time when we explore how to create passive income streams through your blog. I'll catch you then.